I've spent an outrageous amount of time experimenting with Midjourney, and I want to show you everything to take you from setting it up for the first time to generating images like these. Plus, how to make different characters using your face, hyper-realistic photography, creating logos, understanding parameters, in-depth prompting techniques, everything you need to know, and more. Before I jump into the setup, here's a quick example of just how easy it is to get started. Last night, I was messing around with just single word prompts. You just type a concept and see what it comes up with. Did a bunch of these. Microcosm was probably my favorite. Or you could add something simple like RGB, it'll make it colorful. Or bump it up to three word prompts. You can also prompt with emojis, which is pretty fun. Another just fun tip is it's great at replicating celebrities, especially version 5. You probably saw Dope Francis go viral recently. You get the point, it's really easy to make cool stuff, but we want to have more control. So let's start from the beginning. The only way to access Midjourney right now is through Discord. So if you don't have a Discord account, just create one, it's free and easy. Then go to midjourney.com, click sign in, then authorize the Discord bot. The free trial is currently disabled and may or may not be available as you're watching this video. They have a few different pricing options, the $10 per month is good for most people. Now, I assume you're not in as many Discord servers as I am, but this black and white one is the Midjourney server. Over on the left, you'll see these newcomer rooms. You can type your prompts in the newbie chats, but everything will be public and it's hard to keep track of. So I recommend starting a new Discord server and inviting the bot. If you want to, click the plus button on the bottom left, then click create my own and name your server. Then come back to the Midjourney server, find the Midjourney bot over on the right, click on it, then click add to server. Now this is your own workspace where you can stay organized and create in private. And if you want to get fancy like mine, you can right click over here and create new categories and channels. There are two commands you'll use to interact with the bot. They each start with a forward slash. The first is settings. You don't need to pay attention to most of these except turn remix mode on. This will help when modifying versions of the images you get. And then right here is Midjourney version four and version five. They do different things better, but everything I'm going to talk about will apply to both. Then the only other command you need to know is imagine. That will pop this up where you enter your prompt. Now just type anything at all that you want to see. I'll start with something simple. Easy as that. It'll start generating. Just give it a little time to finish. Then you'll see some images that are pretty cool. It'll provide you with four variations each time. The U stands for upscale. This bottom left is number three. If we click U3, it will upscale, which gives us a high quality version. Then the V is for variation. Let's say we like this one, but it's not quite there. We'll click V2, and this is where that remix comes into play. We can use this as our reference image and adjust the prompt. And the blue button just rerolls it completely, giving you four new images from the prompt without referencing any of the previous images. To get more specific results, you can add tags to the prompt separated by commas. One of the most impactful choices you'll make is style. So I'll use the exact same prompt as before, fox in a mountain landscape, then add a style tag at the end. Or instead of choosing a style, you can write a specific artist's name and it will replicate their style. Or you can try more unusual mediums, it will recognize some pretty obscure stuff. So now I want to drop the first two incredible free resources here. The first is midlibrary.io. This is an extremely comprehensive reference guide. It shows you mid-journey generations from different artists and artistic techniques. It's really easy to navigate. It also has amazing in-depth blog posts. Next is this GitHub, which has a massive repository of ideas and testing. It doesn't have as aesthetic of an interface, but it's still really easy to navigate. The style guide has reference generations from different styles, artists, perspectives, lighting, colors, materials, camera lenses. Then beyond all the styles, there's things like testing and cross-analyzing every minute detail like weighting keywords, quality, chaos, and stylized cross-analyses. Really, these are both invaluable resources. Can't recommend them enough. You can learn a ton from all these comparisons and just get inspiration. But moving on to parameters. So they all start with a dash dash. The most straightforward parameter is aspect ratio. That's the width to height ratio. They default to squares, which are a one-to-one -one aspect ratio, but you can change that to essentially anything you want. Some common ones would be 16.9. That's the ratio for TV and computer monitors and YouTube thumbnails. Flipping that to 9.16 would replicate a picture from a smartphone, like if you're mimicking a selfie. 3.2 and 2.3 is common for photography. You get the idea, just type dash dash AR space, then the aspect ratio you want. The next parameter option is stylize using S and then a number between zero and a thousand. This mimics how strongly Midjourney's default aesthetic style is applied. The low stylization values produce images that closely match the prompt, but are less artistic than 
high stylization may be less connected to the prompt, but very artistic. There's a few more parameters. It may seem like a lot at first, but once we go through some examples, it'll all make sense. So just stick with me. Q is for quality. You can choose 0 0.25, 0 0.5, or one. This affects how much detail it adds. The higher numbers will also take longer to generate. It's not affecting the resolution of the image. It's how much detail is within it. Chaos uses numbers between zero and 100. This changes how varied the results will be. The higher values produce more unusual and unexpected variations, which would make all four generations done in very different styles. You'll use seed to reference a previous image you generated. To get the seed, you need to react with the envelope emoji, then we'll DM you the seed, then you'll copy that and paste it into the parameter. So that will use that image as a reference and produce new generations that are similar to it. And then no is for negative prompting. So no plants will try to generate an image without plants. And this can be hit and miss sometimes. Then related is prompt weights and multi-prompting. Adding colon colon to a prompt tells Midjourney to consider each part of the prompt separately. So if you just type hot dog, you'll get images of a hot dog. But if you add the two colons, it will treat them as two separate thoughts and you'll get images of a dog that is hot. Then adding a number after the colons will add relative importance to that part of the prompt. So if we were to add a two here, the word hot is now twice as important as dog. So the result is a dog that is very hot. And there's one more parameter that only works on version five, that's tile. It produces tileable images that are perfectly seamless so you can use them as patterns. This is pretty amazing actually. I know that's a bunch of information. I'll have a short cheat sheet down in the description to help remember it all. A lot of the time you won't even use parameters outside of aspect ratio or you'll only use one or two at a time. They're important to know. Also in a minute I'm going to show a tool that does most of the work for you but let's do some practice first then we'll move on to prompting with your own images. Hyper-realistic photography is one area where Midjourney really shines, especially version five. So I wanna go through some photography examples. So a really easy tip is to just give it the name of a photographer that shoots in the style you're looking for, like an American soldier photographed by Robert Frank or a lion photographed by Paul Nicklin. It already knows what to do with that. And I added the aspect ratios of two, three and three, two, because those are the default for DSLR cameras. And also it gives it more room for interesting compositions when it's not a square. But if we wanna get more precise and customizable, this is a good format and you can just delete any of these fields you don't feel like using but it's a good base to work from one of the most impactful fields there is just naming the type of photography you're looking for so here's some examples using the same prompt and only changing that field Lighting has a huge impact on the mood. You can go down the list and experiment with these. Each field will impact the outcome in different ways. It's fun to mess around with the more unique types of photography, like macro or underwater or satellite. As you do this and make adjustments, it helps to try to think like a photographer. Think about what emotion you're trying to capture, how the pose, angle, and lighting will affect the mood. You can really deep dive here and create some incredible stuff. Nick St. Pierre's Twitter is a great resource to learn more. A couple of the photos he's generated have gotten some press and he has in depth tutorials on his process and various experiments. There's also this amazing color guide in the Midjourney Discord that helps invoke colors into specific areas like eyes or clothing without getting those colors in other places, which is a problem you'll run into. But let's go to kind of the opposite end of the spectrum and create a logo. The most important note here is that Midjourney is notoriously bad at creating text. So if you want text on your logo, you'll have to add it later in Photoshop or Canva or Photopea, whatever you use. You can just type in create a logo for this type of company and see what it comes up with. And then just regenerate until something good pops up. These are all just from the prompt artificial intelligence logo. There's some solid ones in there, but a good way to give it more guidance is to use the name of a logo designer you like. Milton Glazer usually comes back with some great stuff. Here's a few other designers I liked. You can also guide it with types of logos if you have something specific in mind. It's pretty crazy how easy it is to create a great logo in here. If it needs some touch-ups, you can use vectorizer.ai for free that will turn it into a vector file that you can edit in a vector editor like Illustrator. You can also inform Midjourney with an image to work from to replicate a face or environment. So I'll start with an image of my face. First, you need to get a link to the image. The easiest way is to just send it in Discord. So just click plus on the left side of the text box, select the image on your computer and send it. Then you'll right click the image and click copy link. Then paste that URL at the beginning of your next prompt and it will influence the job's composition, style and colors. There's endless possibilities here. These are all just styles of anime. Here's some other cartoon styles. Then I tried it out with different time periods. One I thought was just amazing was Pleistocene. These don't look as close to your face as they would if you trained a stable diffusion model, but it's still really fun. And it will come up with different things depending on how you phrase it and which version you use. This is in Tim Burton style versus as a Tim Burton character. Here are some more unique ones I tried out. So yeah, 
ton of fun and by no means the only thing you can use image prompting for. Here's a photo I took that I want to make look like an oil painting. And there is one more parameter that's image weight. You use IW and that will allow you to control how closely it tries to mimic the image you uploaded. You do the image weight at two, it looks great. Then as I lower that, it gives Mid Journey a lot more artistic license. Since the only text I gave it was oil painting, so it'll start to add random objects and people because it's drawing from its whole bank of oil paintings. You can also combine two or more images. You can use the command blend to do this as well, but if you want to add instructions, stick with imagine, then you can write in your text and parameters. This definitely takes some experimentation to get the hang of. Here's me combining my dog with a photo I took of a moose. There's tons of possibilities here. So now that we've practiced and you have some understanding, I'll show you a couple resources that can do a lot of this work for you. Prompt.noonshot.com is great. You just type in your main idea, then click through the styles, lighting, depth of field elements. You can adjust the parameters, upload an inspiration image if you want, add negative prompts here. Then it will generate the entire prompt for you and you just copy and paste. It helps a ton just to save time and also to get ideas. A new feature they rolled out is the describe command. You can upload your own image, then it will give you four prompt ideas back using what it detects in the image. And you can edit those prompts as you submit them. A lot of times these will turn out better than the original. Also, it's just a great way to get new prompt ideas. It's also pretty fun to upload a picture of yourself and see what it comes back with. Let's see if it can make a better thumbnail than me. Not bad. Twitter's a great place to get prompt ideas. Here's a few of my favorite Twitter follows. I Create Life posts some prompting challenges to participate in and just all around great stuff. Chet Bliss has been posting a ton of unique ideas. These paper dolls by Anonymous are amazing. Linus Ekenstam posts good mid journey and all around AI content. Another great method is just to scroll through the explore tab on the mid journey website. This is a really cool one I saw. If you scroll down, there will be related images. It shows the full prompt here and the parameters down below. You can click copy full command and it will copy the entire prompt and parameters. Then you just paste it into discord and generate. You could also try saving the image, then using the describe command, then use that as inspiration for your own prompt. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do more mid journey videos to deep dive into specific styles or advanced prompt structures. And I'll see you in the next one.